After last week's video in which I uh, invented a new build order to play against Protoss, I was thinking to myself a couple of days later, and I was wondering, what if this build is just good against every single race? The way that Akris did the Cyclone build, it was pretty okay against every single race. And then I started thinking, well, having a tank very early on is probably better against Terran. It probably is very useful against Zerg as well, because you can burst through Spines and through Queens. So I was, I was just kind of wondering, what is it worth against? And I honestly couldn't really come up with something. So here I am, and I'm just going to be playing it against Terrans and Zergs today. We already know that it works against Protoss. Ooh, it's kind of important for me to not lose that fight. I don't want him to scout. How is it going to fare against Terran players? That's going to be my question here for today. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I, 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 like I, th I think in my mind it should be good, right? Because... Um, it's just better to have a tank rather than just pure cyclone because one of the things that sucks to fight against is uh, it's like marines and uh, all that type of stuff and you deal with those just fine if you have a tank and cyclones also suck against other cyclones but tanks are very good against cyclones so if they defend with cyclones I can kill them with tanks if they defend with tanks I don't know what will happen but it doesn't sound great I'm gonna send this thing around by the way that way I can have some high ground vision by the time I arrive on the other side of the map. I'm not sure if I can actually. Maybe I should just fly through the middle of the map actually. Because I'm gonna have these cyclones anyway, right? Like what's he gonna be capable of doing? Not a whole lot, I don't think so at least. Yeah, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just straight up gonna fly across the middle of the map once my first two cyclones are out. So I wanna... Okay, I started that. First two cyclones now popping out. I almost want to build a depot over here so I can wall this area off. I feel like that would be good. I wonder if he has this. Yeah, he does. So I'm just going to move back, see if I can kill him. Oh, I definitely can kill him. Oh, I definitely can kill him. Oh, I definitely can kill him. Um, you're going to go here, little buddy. Yeah, you're definitely going to go here. Okay, this feels very good for me. I'm just going to keep map control because we're flying this thing across the map. I wonder if I should get my SCVs with me immediately or if I... Wait, am I stuck? I didn't even know you could get stuck here. How the heck am I... Oh, I'm going to move out to the left side eventually, I guess. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay, I figured out how to get out of here. Um, just, I'm going to have to lift this thing. And I'm going to put my SEV there as well at some point. So that no tank can, draw, can you know, get stuck in that uh, general spot anymore. God, that's pretty smart. But this thing is moving across the map. It's actually going to hit right on time as well. Right when I want it. Is this, is this on the complete wrong side? I think it was, yeah. Oh, that's so epic. I love when things are epic like this. So this is going to be positioned here right now. I don't quite think this is working out entirely how I wanted to. The Reaper really cost me quite a bit. Oh my god, you can't make this up. <laughs> look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> come to Papa, baby! What's up? <laughs> there we go. Absolute destruction. This is what we signed up for. No GG. And we get seven points in the pocket. Instantly start our next game as well. Oh, boy. That was... I don't think it could have been any more perfect. Like, the move out time of him moving away from his natural starting to fight my barracks. That was a thing of beauty, my dear friends. Let's hop into our next game. All right. Up next, we have ourselves a random player. A barcode random player. These are the the lowest of the low. It's unbelievable, these guys. How how dare they? Oh, I already had the music on. My ears are getting worse. Can't hear the music anymore. Um, what am I going to do here? Well, very simple. I'm going to open up with a Marine. I'm not going to scout because I don't really care what he's doing. It, most of the time, my opponent should be scouting me, not the other way around. And here we truly get a test of the build, you know, to see how viable it is against all three races at the same time. Well, that's not entirely true, but at least one out of the three races. <laughs> Let's see. And th the fact that you can just blindly do that, that's what thats what makes this build so beautiful. Okay, there's very little things that are as good as this in life, where you can just blindly execute a build no matter the race. It's always going to be good. It's a little bit how I think Proxy Turex was for a while in like uh, Wings of Liberty and stuff. You could literally, if you were playing as a random player, you could just Proxy Turex and you'd have a chance of winning no matter what. Proxy 2 Rex was actually extremely good for such a long time. It's crazy to think about. And it's still very good. Like, I'm not saying it's bad now. I'm just saying that people have figured out better ways of dealing with it. God, we should one day just do a Proxy 2 Rex special again. I feel like I haven't done one of those in a while. Just 
pure i love doing just the same build again and again and then getting slightly worse or slightly better at it over time there's something that feels so beautiful about it just really i'm i'm, I'm a fan oh, i'm a little bit late here with this uh factory el factory I'm gonna get a, a little depot out here. I'm gonna need a fast reactor as well. Then this guy. I learned from my last game. Look at that. This is this is why we iterate, right? So we play the same maps again and again. So you can get this iteration. So rather than building it up here, I'm just gonna build it down here. And this is this is how you can see that I'm a thinking man. You know, someone who isn't a thinking man might not have figured it out, but I I figured it out. We're gonna gonna build it further away here. Make sure our tank doesn't get stuck like it did last time because that freaking sucked. Um, yeah, because I have absolutely no clue what my opponent is up to. Um, I, I don't quite know how I want to move my crap. You know, do I want to fly my barracks across the map? Do I want to... He also hasn't scouted, so I feel like this might be a Zerg player. As a result, we're going to open up Double Cyclone. Well, actually, we were always going to open up Double Cyclone. I'm not so sure why I said as a result. Oh, okay, look. It's one of these. Wait, I can kill that. I can absolutely kill that. <sighs> Zerg. Dot, dot, dot. Not two dots, actually. Pretend like I'm very sad. But he scouted it! Why would he have a Ling over here? Mm. Oh, he's actually also entering my main base right now. This is... This has been a very mediocre start for me. Can I say that? Yes, I can say that. Well, this is going to be the greatest test ever to see if this build is viable or not. If you can execute this build while being fully scouted, playing against a random player, that's a good sign, okay? That's a very good sign for the build order, let me tell you. That is that is probably the best sign we could have hoped for. Okay, just going to patrol this thing over here so I know when I'm being run by it upon. Um, I think here I actually do want to have... Oh, really? What? You think I can even pop out? Yeah, I can. This did not go well at all. This was absolutely the worst thing that could have happened. Him scouting me in four different ways. And then he just built links on what, 25 workers. He didn't deserve this win. Why? If I would have built the factory in the same place as last time, by the way, I would have been capable of having it 44 points. Let's quickly click that away so no one sees it. Jesus. All right. Well, that was frustrating, but a good lesson in humbleness. And those are also important. Ooh. I'm next for fighting against Misu. He's a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent Terran player. I wonder if the best thing that I can do actually is open up with a Reaper against Terran. Because otherwise, if I don't open up with a Reaper, I'm going to give him a free scout. But if I do open up with a Reaper, I'm having a slower kind of follow-up. But I think I, I want to kind of, you know, I, I want to disguise what I'm doing. I don't want my opponent to know for sure as to what is kicking off. I think it's going to be important here. So, yeah, we'll open up with a Reaper, just like I did in the first game today. Then we'll take it from there, hopefully. Just throw the little barracks down. Pretend like I know how to micro my workers. That, that shenanigans. So good. I think this, you know, I think Misu is like 5'7 or so. This is another real test. I failed last test. I, I'm still sad about that. I think I need to hide the factory better. So maybe I should have real locations where I put factories rather than just improvising it on the spot. That might seem like a smart play, actually. I'm going to start thinking about that a little bit more. Okay, let's get into gas as quick as possible. That's actually quite important. You know what's funny is that I think this is also very good against proxy racks. Is that true? I'm not sure if it's true. Actually, no, it probably just loses the proxy racks. But if I don't die, I'm in a really good spot because I have a proxy factory on the map. Um, this guy's going to go top right side. I think that's going to be my plan for now. And I like that plan quite a bit. Okay, just going to build a depot. And then the factory comes out. Now, a nice thing about having to send this SUV on the map is that I also immediately scout for proxy racks, at least on one side. So, although I'm not going to find any right now, most likely, if they are positioned over here. Um, ooh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. It's a weird scout timing as well, by the way. You gotta, gotta kind of keep an eye on that, huh? Really gotta keep an eye on that. Because that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty odd scout timing, I don't lie. 
Gotta send this one in. Where are you at, buddy? I know you're proxying me. Okay, I don't think he's proxying me. He just scouted. He just scouted. On a factory over here. Two on the factory over there. Ooh. So they can do very much of anything here right now. I don't really want to lose any fights. I'm just going to stand on top of this ramp. Okay. And what was my next plan again? Is flying this thing across the map. Basically, let's see if we can start going already. Because that could actually be somewhat important. If he opens up with like double um what you call these guys double um double reaper and a hellion that could suck for me because then he might see that i don't have anything here that would actually quite suck for me that really would suck for me i would not quite enjoy that so we're just gonna take a bit of an angle around it's more awkward on this map because i don't have watchtower vision like i did on the previous you know so i don't have as, mu as much as much map presence really I wonder if he's here or not. So I think I'm just winning every early game fight. Um, if you go for two Cyclones. But that should be good. I'm just gonna chill here in the bushes. I wonder if he can see me. I like I'm pushing through a bit too far. Some more of these. Oh wait. Two more of these. I feel like I don't have enough gas when I build the Reaper. Which actually kind of does suck. Not gonna lie. Not a huge fan of how that's going. I think you can just move across the map and start fighting. I feel like the earlier I go, the worse it is for me. So let's just go instantly. That made no sense. That's what I'm here for. I if I can actually... Actually get him. I can definitely build a CC behind this, by the way. I'm not going to. Because I'm going to lose some workers, most likely. Okay. Oh, here he goes. Into my main base. That means we're just gonna walk up here, up his ramp. Oh, that's good for me, huh? Let's see if I can start this thing. That was good for me. The the division of the of the barracks is helping me out so so much here. Like I can't I can't stress that enough. How much that's helping me out. I think without that I just would have lost. But with it, I think I just win. Like just absolutely just straight up win. Oh, he's gonna float everything? Seems a bit mean now. Kind of really rock. Are you really gonna float your buildings? <laughs> There's something so sad about this. Y you know why it's so sad? Because it's literally telling another person that your own time is worth less than theirs. That's why it's so sad. Because you're wasting both of our time. And that trade only makes sense if your time is worth less. So either you're accepting a terrible trade, or you know your time is worth less. And for me, the funny thing is, is that for I don't care. I'm making a video anyway, buddy. Yeah, you know, this is this is two extra advertisements that I'm pushing, putting in because this guy is, <laughs> is floating his crap. This is so sick. Oh, I liked him as I started with good luck, have fun. Yeah, we all have bad days, I guess. That's fair. Absolutely fair. We can all have our bad days. That is okay. We all have our bad days. There's nothing wrong with that. We all have our bad days. The song isn't quite done yet either, but it's, you know, it's getting along. Um, let me actually just piss off with this one. I just, this actually just saddens me a bit. It, it, it doesn't feel right. I, I don't like this. I just don't like it. I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going to build a second starport as well. I'm going to be a one starport Andy over here. No shot. Absolutely no shot. I got a second little starport. Um, I need some more... Uh, yeah, I need some more minerals. So I had to cancel that for a second. Hate to see it. Hate to see it. This is not okay. This is, yeah, I, I'm really not okay with this. You know, I just don't like it. I, what, what are we doing here? Huh? Yeah, grown man sitting here watching you float building. This, it's been so long since someone done this against me. I don't think this has ever happened to me in, in the cheesiest man alive. 
And how many how many episodes have I done of that? Like hundreds at this point. And I don't think it's ever anyone floated. Is it I really thought this didn't exist at the high level. I really thought this was a this was fake, you know? I cannot believe I'm actually playing against this. This is surreal. It's like I'm in one of these movies, like a, a dream sequence movie, you know? You, know, you wake up at the end, like, oh, it's all fake. Yeah, like, oh, what a great movie. Glad we watched that for three hours. And then it all ended up being just a dream. That was absolutely great fun. What a great story. I freaking, you know what I hate as well? I hate when uh, uh, there's like a good story and then all of a sudden aliens get introduced to explain something that can't be explained. It feels like such a cheap cop-out. So I, I read a book by, I think it was Stephen King when I was young, very young, like 16 or so, very young. Um, and it's called Under the Dome, I think. I, I'm gonna spoil it a bit now, but they, I freaking love the synopsis in the entire book. And then at some point, all of a sudden, there's a freaking alien in there that explains everything. And I remember being so disappointed that I don't even think I finished the book. I just remember reading that bar, that part, and I thought I was being in like an episode of Pranked or what's it called? Punked. That's the one with Aston Kutcher, right? Where it comes, oh, you've been punked. Yeah, the, it felt like I was on a, on a freaking prank show or something. I was so sad about it. I couldn't believe it that I've been reading this book, waiting for the great reveal, and it was a freaking alien that was doing it all. It's like a freaking it really. This is the great. I was so excited for it, and then it, I hated it. I hated it ever since. Whenever I think of Stephen King, all I can think of him wasting that. That, that book had like 800 pages, the thickest book I read in my life up until that point. Now I read thick books all the time. I'm a huge fan of the thick books. No longer has any forces. Yeah, this is this is not okay. Awful stuff. Awful stuff. But I think that counts as an OGG. And we're going to see how much MMR we get from this guy. Because I think it's a lot of MMR. 20. Okay, it was lower than I thought. It's 5. Oh, 5.5. I think that's what it said. 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 7. Something like that. Nice 20 points. Getting some back from uh, what we lost earlier. All right, up next we have a Protoss player. 5.9k Protoss player, by the way. Not just a, not just a regular... A ladder Andy. This is a it's a serious this is a serious competitor, you know? 5.9 is uh, what maybe top 40 GM or so. I really like beating high level players with stuff. It it feels so good. Because I know I have no chance when I play macro against them. But I know I have all the chances when I play this type of crap against them. And it just I it feels right. Oh, I almost messed it up. I almost messed it up. That was really close to messing that up. Um, now we're gonna get this one. Oh, you think it's just gonna stay in? Little break. So we're pretending to pull out of gas. I mean, we're pulling out of gas, but we're, we're sending back in gas as well. You know, so it's really just pretending. Oh, I didn't kill that properly. Um, you're gonna go here. You're gonna go in here. Because it's really important that you have enough gas. But if a proto scouts that you're keeping gas, then they know, oh, it's a one basal in, and they might open up with a robotics facility. Which I'm not sure still if a robotics facility is actually such a hard counter to this, but it feels like it should be a hard counter to it. So, you know, just in case, I I, I don't want them to know this. And in general, if your opponent has less info, most of the time that's a good thing. Okay, here we go. We have these things out. We're starting a, a, an extra depot already over here. That's good, obviously. I wonder if I want him to scout my main. No, I don't. I actually know the answer to that. The answer is no, I don't want him to scout my main. Just gonna get a little, um, what do you call that over here? A little tech lab. A little bit of a tech lab. And maybe one more of these. One more of these. Okay, come on, boys. Did I want another marine in here? I don't think I can quite afford that, right? He's gonna finish it? For a second, I thought he was going to finish that, to be honest. Here comes my first tank. I wonder if he finishes that. There's no way. There's actually no way he finishes that. Okay, we have that thing on the way. We have more of these on the way. One more depot. One more depot. That's truly the final one. And then I'm going to get a couple of uh, a couple of workers with this push as well. It's actually important to have some workers for repair. So here we go. <coughs> Maybe I should wait though for my second my second tank. I feel like the second tank honestly is kind of the the main point of the build. 
It's like, that's where I'm the strongest, it feels like. That's where I have my peak. So I'm hitting right after maybe the first two, uh, like, war pins have been, have been used. Ooh. I mean, what if it's, you know? What if it's uh, DTs, is what I'm thinking now. So this is good for a start. This is real good for a start. He's actually going for it, isn't he? No prick. Oh, he's actually coming in as well right now. I think we just win this then, no? Like, I, I kill every single worker here. I legit killed every single worker. He's not going... Yeah, no GG. No GG. One floater, no GGs. It is truly insane what this build does to people. I think this is the build that I've had the most success with. And I love that I made this build myself. 30 MMR, 5652 uh, in total. I'm going to have to add another number on the uh, right side of the equation here. 227 out of 358. This build is uh, is pushing the no GGers back, back up a little bit. The percentages of GG decreasing. That not happened in a while. Love to see it here. Good floater today. Good episode altogether. I hope you all enjoyed it too. If you did, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out yesterday's video in which I play in a tournament. And don't lose in the first round. And that is something to be very proud of. Uh, I hope you all enjoy that. And uh, ciao, ciao.